Hi, I'm Dan Renicky with Unknown Media. Today, let's take a look at how to achieve a dreamy vintage photo effect in your photography. Let's take a look. All right, I am going to show you how to create a dreamy vintage photo effect similar to this photo right here. Let's start off by deleting all of these layers and we will start from scratch. Now again, you can do this any way you want, but just understanding the general principles is very important so then you can play around with them yourself. So we start with the background. We're going to go ahead and duplicate that layer. So we have our background copy now and what we're going to do, we're going to go up here to the filter panel. I'm going to go to blur and go Gaussian blur. And we'll leave the radius here at about 20. Now don't be afraid why your image is so blurry right now. You're going to go up here to the blending options and you're going to go down to soft light. Now what this kind of does is just make your photos glow a little bit more. Now what you're going to want to do from there to make your photo kind of uh, more of a vintage feel, I always, I personally feel that you get the vintage look based upon the colors. So we're going to go to color balance. Now here we can affect the shadows, midtones, and highlights, the different colors in them. Start with the shadows and go ahead and just add some cyans to those shadows and maybe even some yellows. There we go. Now we'll go into the highlights and let's add some reds to the highlights and yellow. Now, as you can see, this gives a much more stylized look than it previously was. Now another thing we can do is go and create a new layer. All right, and then actually let's go ahead and create a new fill layer under the layer panel. Solid color. Okay. Now this is again going to be completely up to you. I'm going to go ahead and go with a blue and select OK. Now obviously we don't want our whole image to be blue, so we're going to go over here into the blending options and we're going to go lighten. Now obviously this is way too much, so let's go to the opacity and bring it down. Now as you can see what this is actually doing is it's altering our shadows. If you can see in the trees how dark the shadows are, now light is actually bringing them up and we select that blue color so it's going to affect that by adding those blue tones to it. You can go back here and as you can see different colors will have different effects and you can change that before or after. You know what, I might go ahead and stick with this more brownish color and maybe bring back the original photo a little bit more and we have that. Now from here we are going to go ahead and create a new layer. Now what we're going to do with this layer is actually bring in another image. Now this can be achieved many different ways and really whatever image you want to bring in is I guess up to you but bring something in that's going to be a texture. You want to bring in a texture. So let me show you what I have here. We have this somewhat of a canvas paper and simply what we're going to do is go select all and then we're going to copy that. I'm going to go back to our image and on this new layer that we created we are going to go ahead and paste that. Now we're going to select this and we're going to drag it up here then we're going to go into Edit, Transform, Scale and we are just going to cover the entire image with that texture. And obviously we're not going to want that so we're going to go into Blending Options and let's try Overlay and that's a little bit too much for me so what I'm going to want to do I'll go soft light. Now that gives much more softer effect and we can even go in here into the opacity and drop that down. And now it's very subtle but you can still see 
the effect of that texture coming in. And now from here, it's really going to be entirely up to you what you want to do, but here's some neat little tricks that I do. Let's create a new layer. Okay, so now we have an entirely blank layer. Let's go ahead and select our gradient tool over here. Now, make sure the gradient is selected from foreground to transparent. Now the foreground color is white, so what that is going to do is this. Now as you can see, it's going to, basically I'm using this to enhance the highlights that are already in the photo. And this kind of will really help sell that, that almost dreamy feel. And you can do this basically as much as you want. And if you think you've done it a little too much, what I like to do is basically overdo it and then come over to my opacity and then drop it down from there. Now, as you can see, the difference between the two of those. Another little trick I like to do is maybe throw in a kind of a color in there. Maybe, maybe it'll be somewhat of a, almost look like a, a mistake, but that's all right. These are gonna be really stylized photos. So go ahead and add your new layer. All right, go ahead and select your lasso tool. Now, I have the feather selected here at 200 pixels, which that's gonna be, that's a fair amount um, for a photo of this size. Now, go ahead and just draw kind of an obscure shape, just like so. Now, I'm gonna go in my layer, and I'm gonna go new fill layer, fill layer gradient, Okay, I'm gonna adjust that gradient accordingly and maybe throw in maybe a, yeah, let's go a little bit more pink in it. Yeah, kind of a pink. I'm gonna go ahead and select okay, okay. Uh, let's go ahead and bring the scale up, soften it up a little bit. All right, now we can even go into the filter and possibly blur this. It's gonna ask if you want to rasticize the fill. Select okay. Now again, this is just gonna, gonna kind of be to soften that effect up. And if you want to lessen it a bit, you can lessen it. But again, this is just gonna kind of help sell that old vintage look by adding kind of a somewhat of a mistake into it. Now you can drag it anywhere you want in the photo. I'm gonna go ahead and put it kinda here. You can really start to kinda see it coming in the boots and whatnot. Now, another thing that I like to do at the end is make a vignette. This vignette is really gonna help that photo pop. So again, you're gonna select your lasso tool and draw just kind of an obscure shape around the image itself. Just kind of however you want this vignette to come in. I like to make it as of an obscure shape as possible so it doesn't necessarily stand out like just a perfect circle may. Now once you have your selection, go ahead. Now you're going to select. Now you're going to inverse that selection. Now as you can see, the selection is going around the outside of the photo and here. Now what this is going to do, as you can see, the white is going to be what's affected and the black is going to be what's not affected. So now this vignette is going around the photo. Now here you can just simply darken that up and it's going to bring in a little bit of, little bit of a uh, contrast to your photo. So that is just something simply that you can do to make your photo pop a little bit more. Maybe go ahead and don't be afraid, make, a, make another gradient, make another one on the, uh, or another vignette on the inside. Maybe like bring up her a little bit. This can simply add a little bit of a punch and, and some contrast to the photo. So now we have here, and now we don't want to inverse the selection because we want the effect to be in here. So now again, we'll go ahead and add our curves. And this you might want to be a little careful with because you can easily overdo it. But again, just 
raise it up a little bit and maybe maybe drop the shadows so you bring in some more contrast to her as well. Yeah, that has a real just a real unique dreamy vintagey photo feel to it. Now if you want, you can go ahead and disable all the views to this. So that's the photo we started off with and then after you add all those effects, boom. Dreamy vintage photo. Thanks again for watching guys. Hopefully this will help you out with some of your own photos. And that's how you achieve a dreamy vintage photo effect in your photography. I'm Dan Reneke. Take your best shot. <laughs>